In 1817, explorer John Oxley declared the Griffith region in New South Wales uninhabitable and useless to civilised man. Over 200 years later, it's a thriving oasis, thanks largely to the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Scheme, which supports the thriving agricultural industry here. Now, a major food bowl for Australia, the region produces wine, rice, citrus and nuts. It also produces 95% of Australia's prunes, and that's where I'm headed to today. Grant, we're here at your beautiful prune orchard, but I don't seem to see many plums on the trees. No, that's right, Justine. Only three or four days ago, we finished harvest. So uh, in autumn, that's what we do. And uh, here we are all finished up for the year. So when it comes to harvest, what is the process? Prunes are a tree fruit, mm -hmm. so they're actually harvested by machinery that are quite versatile. They're used for uh, a variety of different products like olives and other tree fruits and mm -hmm. so on. So they're actually shaking and catching machines. Yeah. Grant, I think there'd be a lot of people out there that do know what a prune is but don't know what it looks like before it's been dried. Do you think we can maybe have a look through the orchard, maybe find at least one of them on the tree? Sure, Justine, I'm sure we'll find one. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Justine. These are, these are young trees, so these weren't actually harvested. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's still some fruit on these trees. But they will be absolutely sweet and beautiful to eat. Griffith has an abundance of water, yep. beautifully fertile soil, mm -hmm. and a wonderful Mediterranean climate, which means we have nice, usually wet winters, uh, while all the trees and so on are dormant. And then during the summer, we have these beautiful, long, warm days, usually fairly dry, uh, and beautiful cool nights. that. So Justine, this is the final product. Uh, you'll probably notice that they're a lot drier than you would yes. normally see in the packs. Yeah. These are dried down for storage purposes. Mm -hmm. We then sell them to the processors who all they do is rehydrate them back to about 30% moisture, yes. package them, add nothing. Yep. Beautiful. Natural. All natural product. Mm. It tastes like caramel. They're so sweet. They're just, they're addictive. Yep, How do you are. stay so slim eating all these? Because they're good for <laughs> well, you. Well, because they're very good for you, Justine, <laughs> absolutely. Reggie, do you like your prunes too? do a very special dish just to, to show off this amazing produce. I want to do a bruschetta and there's a lot of Italian influence here in Griffith. So a sweet bruschetta. You'll need some sourdough. I've just toasted that so it's nice and crunchy. And for the prunes, and look at this, you can see that these are the ones that haven't been rehydrated and these ones have, see how they're nice and soft? But I want to take it one step further and soak them even further to take on some extra flavour and that flavour is masala which is a fortified wine, a southern Italian fortified wine. It has a wonderful caramelised sort of sweet nutty flavour. It goes so well with prunes. So I've got this on a medium heat. You just want it to start to come to the boil so we can cook off the alcohol and this is going to turn into a syrup. So we need to add some sugar. You really only want a small amount of sugar in this because the prunes are quite sweet themselves. But this is going to give us a glossy syrup. So just a, about a tablespoon of sugar in there. For some extra flavours, cinnamon. So one cinnamon stick and some orange. So you just need one peel. Pop that straight in. So that's smelling fantastic. We're going to add our gorgeous prunes and you'll see how much flavour those prunes are going to take on. So while they're just bubbling away, let's get on to a really creamy component to this sweet bruschetta. This is a ricotta delicata, so it's really smooth after it's been whisked. It's got a lovely creamy consistency, quite fluffy too. It's going to really complement our prunes that are the hero of this dish after all. Just for some extra sweetness, Icing sugar will give that a really good whisk. So you want to just break it up and let it become quite smooth and then we'll add some cream. Now I'm just adding some cream just so it becomes quite spreadable. So 
You really only need a small amount of this. It's great. And another whisk. See how smooth that becomes? That is just gorgeous, nice and smooth. You don't want to over whisk this because it can split. So you just really want to combine it together. Okay, that's done. Let's have a look at these prunes. Looking good, smells fantastic. We'll just give that a little longer. And you do want to cool them in the syrup. Once they've cooled down, then we can start plating up. Have a look at these soaked prunes. They're so soft. And you can see there's almost very little syrup left. This is what you want. All right, to assemble this, we'll get our toast, a generous spoonful of our sweetened ricotta. Oh, look at that. That's lovely. Now, this is fantastic for a brunch, definitely a breakfast, but if you wanted to, there's no reason why this can't be served as a little dessert. Just fantastic. On two of the toasts, and then we're going to add our masala prunes and we'll just pop them on top. These prunes can be stored in an airtight container in the fridge. They'll last for a good couple of weeks, if they last that long. And that right there is a gorgeous, very simple way to show off prunes. Yes, they're fantastic just as a snack, but you can see there's so much more to them. And what a place to cook. Geez, I'm a lucky girl. Mm. Best prunes in Australia. Thank you.